Today we'll be discussing the fantastic technology of the 19th century. For more info, you can go to the Stolen History Forum. A link should be in the description below. Researchers found a terrific book called Mechanical Engineering in 1867. The link to this book will also be in the description. There are three volumes of this book. Look it up and you will find a lot of interesting things. So, we'll start with the basics. It was published in 1867. We can see the rock drilling machine that was invented and patented by George Lowe. Check this perfect device. The world was still transporting goods on wagons, but here we see a three-axle drilling machine that isn't even a prototype. This is a realistic operating device made by Turner of Ipswich, England. The machine was powered by a pneumatic system that could use compressed air or steam. The compressor could be positioned at certain distances. The machine moved along the rails. The drilling cylinder rotated on its axis and also moved up and down to strike the rock at a speed of 300 to 500 beats per minute. How is it possible to create such a complex device in the 19th century? Where were the intermediate achievements of mankind in mechanical engineering? Look at this photograph. This is how the production technology of chariots developed. The chariot of the 18th century is practically indistinguishable from the 19th century. There is no technological progress. But if we open the mechanical engineering book, we see wonderful machine tools made of metal in the middle of the 19th century. This isn't just about this drilling machine. Let's open up to page 100. Look at this tunneling machine. This is a very complex design. You might think it's a 19th century blueprint, as if it was a 1960s mechanical engineering textbook. How could this be designed in the middle of the 19th century, if industrial production of steel was mastered in only 1840? Also, here is an injector scheme, all of that in the middle of the 19th century, where people who couldn't improve their chariot designs were making schemes for injectors. This is an amazing book which you should definitely browse at your own leisure. Now, take a look at this cotton machinery. As if back from a 20th century textbook. Also here is page 324 of volume 4, a steamroller. What equipment could make those mid-19th century wheels for this roller? Where are these huge lathes located? How could such a massive breakthrough in mechanical engineering happen? Let's get back to the chariots. According to historians, chariots have practically not changed in 200 years. But in mechanical engineering, for 20 years without any preliminary developments, there was a giant leap for three-axle tunneling machines and huge steamrollers for the streets, or even aerial steam machines, in 1868. Some researchers suggested these strange inconsistencies actually point to a steampunk reality. For anyone that doesn't know what steampunk is, it's like an alternate version of history in which mankind evolved steam technology rather than the technologies we use today. Here are photos from the mythical steampunk. This is an engraving from the Mechanical Engineering book of the 19th century. Some researchers suggest this is evidence that steampunk was in fact no fiction. This is an actual ancient technology. Again, look at page 198 of volume 5, Aerial Machines. Or page 202, a 30-ton portable steam crane. Where did these technologies come from in the 19th century, when mankind only had recently mastered steel production? The most interesting thing is that the description in the book indicates that all the schemes were created using real photographs. 
According to this book, it was compiled on the basis from photographs of 19th century equipment. This means that there have been photographs of this complex equipment before. This book is more like an inventory of those ancient techniques and machines which existed in the pre-flood period. After the catastrophe, we don't have an accurate description of the previous civilization's techniques. Researchers failed to explain such a huge leap in engineering. How could they easily switch from the production of wagons into three-axle tunneling machines? We implore you to read this book for yourself and please write down in the comments below which technical innovation you liked the most. We were very impressed with all the aerial steam machines. This is real steampunk. We also find the three-axis machines to be particularly amazing and it clearly shows that our history is much more interesting than we've been told.